for today's online training session. So my name is Simon Grandet and I'm the photogrammetric workflow specialist here at SimActive. So today the topic of the online training session will be how to accurately merge uh, imagery with LiDAR data. Uh, the, the, um, the use of uh, LiDAR data and imagery data is getting more common these days uh, with different mapping projects. However, depending on the setup that you have uh, with your cameras and your LiDAR system, it can be sometimes uh, challenging to perfectly, um, to perfectly register both uh, sources together. So today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present you uh, the, the workflow that we suggest if you want to perfectly register your LiDAR and your images together uh, with our latest version of Corridor 3D 8.6. So the topic of my presentation, basically, I'll start by understanding the difference between uh, LiDAR and photogrammetry. Then I'm going to talk about how to import LiDAR point cloud in Correlator 3D using LiDAR intensity for the image registration during the AT or to rectifying on LiDAR DEMs, colorizing LiDAR point cloud. Also, I'll talk about other tools uh, for LiDAR data that can be useful if you want to if you want to get the max out of your data. And finally, we will finish with a series of questions. Uh, with a series of questions uh, that we will have during this presentation. So, if you have any questions during this presentation, feel free to write us uh, in the chat. Uh, and I'll, at the end of the presentation, I'll uh, take a few of those questions and answer them uh, as much as I can regarding this presentation. Also, this this uh, presentation is registered and will be available uh, on our uh, website, semactive.com. So first of all, understanding the difference between LiDAR and photogrammetry. So first of all, what is LiDAR and what does infor what information does it provide? So LiDAR uh, stands for Light Detection and Ranges. It comes in different types of sensors. So we have different, uh, we have LiDAR system that offer full waveform, discrete return, multispectral uh, LiDAR, depending on the sensor that you have. The most common usually that we see on the market is the discrete return LiDAR. Uh, and basically, LiDAR is um, basically li LiDAR is um, uh, is uh, an active remote sen remote sen sensing technique, uh, which uh, is able to generate a 3D point cloud. Uh, it comes. Uh, it it sends different pulses and measure the distance. Uh, of the pulse uh, when it's touching an object and then uh, coming back to the uh, to the uh, airplane. Uh, it requires uh, basically a high accurate GPS and IMU uh, in order to, to, to be able to, uh, to position uh, the, the, the aircraft and the sensor um, during the acquisition. Uh, so as I mentioned, it provides uh, 3D information. So you have an XYZ position for each uh, LiDAR pulse, but also uh, it can uh, store uh, intensity uh, data, which usually um, gives more information about the types of object that the pulse uh, hit. Um, so depending on the object, well, the intensity will differ and we can use this information if we want to tide uh, our project with our uh, imagery data. So, um, uh, how does uh, then LiDAR differ, uh, dif differ from photogrammetry? Well, uh, basically, uh, each of them has their own uh, advantage and disadvantages. So, first of all, the LiDAR um, uh, is uh, is much quicker collection since uh, you have uh, less overlap between your stripe and uh, you can have uh, between your stripes so it, it's uh, it's uh, it's much more quicker to 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 acquire uh, also the accuracy uh, that you can get from uh, the uh, lidar point cloud is really high and um, especially for terrain mapping uh, in in some specific application uh, lidar uh, can be used can be used to map uh, 
to map under uh, under the canopy since there's so many poles that uh, some of them can hit the ground and then come back. So if you want to ma maybe measure the heights of the canopy, it can be uh, useful to have LiDAR data uh, if you want to have uh, an accurate terrain model. Also, uh, in other um, in other applications such as uh, geomorphology, where you want to probably see um, the, the the terrain uh, the terrain features if you're looking for uh, for uh, glacier, um, for gl glacier um, uh, topics or or indices that that were left uh, from the past. Well, sometimes a lidar can be useful uh, with our terrain uh, with our terrain uh, model. Also, one thing is that lidar can be flown days and nights since it's an active uh, remote sensing uh, remote sensing technique. Uh, however, it has their own disadvantages such as the cost. Uh, LiDAR acquisition is fairly expensive uh, compared to photogrammetry, uh, so that's uh, that's something that's quite uh, that's quite uh, uh, deal breaking. Um, also, uh, depending on uh, your sensor that you're gonna have, uh, you may need to normalize the intensity since the intensity can be affected by the range um, by the range of um, of the uh, of the lidar poles, uh, and one other thing is that the classification of a lidar can point cloud can be quite time consuming. Uh, if you want to have a, a good and accurate uh, point cloud classification, well, it can be uh, it can uh, require a lot of manual editing uh, if you want to have good results. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to use photogrammetry, well, photogrammetry can give you uh, a, a few of advantages. The first one, probably. Uh, the most significant one is uh, the the point cloud, the colorization to the point cloud. So it it brings the the, the color information, which can uh, which can kind of uh, uh, take uh, a bit more human friendly uh, the geospatial data, since you're gonna have the RGB information or the NIR depending on the the spectral band you will use. Uh, but uh, this uh, RGB information get, can can uh, gives a, a lot of information um, if you want to do some sort of analysis for let's say tree species classification or or even point cloud classification. Well, the spectral information is uh, something really useful. Um, the cost is really less than lidar data. Than lidar data. Uh, typically, photogrammetry can be done uh, with uh, with uh, uh, a normal uh, UAV uh, that uh, that that is quite uh, accessible for everyone. So it's uh, it's it's much more cheaper uh, and affordable uh, for for mapping for mapping project uh, compared to lidar data. Uh, however, there's maybe some of disadvantages uh, of photogrammetry. Uh, well, is uh, is what I usually tell to customers is what you see is what you get. So uh, the quality input data uh, is really the key uh, in photogrammetry. And also, uh, we can map what we see on the images. So uh, as I said before, LiDAR can, uh, can derive uh, accurate terrain model. Well, sometimes photogrammetry uh, can be good to derive accurate surface model, but it can be sometimes challenging if you want to maybe uh, have an accurate uh, terrain model since uh, you have elements that, that might be over, um, over uh, your feature. Um, other uh, elements to consider is that photogrammetry can also be uh, hardware consuming so or, or time consuming. It, it's it's not a long process, but you need to go through a photogrammetric process. So the AT, uh, then the DM, the DM, uh, the DM extraction, the ortho rectification, then the mosaic creation, and maybe uh, the, um, the 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 3D model generation. Uh, and then finally, I think one of the most disadvantages of photogrammetry is it weather sensitive. What, what, what does it mean by weather sensitive is uh, since it's a passive a, a passive remote sensing technique, uh, well, uh, it's sensitive to the lightning condition. So you cannot have too many shadows or, or too, too much sun uh, because it's going to influence the, uh, the, the quality of your images. Um, also, there's, there's the phenomenon of occlusion. So uh, if you want to be able to get 3D data from your uh, images, you need to see the point of view from at least uh, two different perspectives. Uh, 
so sometimes this uh, the overlap uh, will affect um, the overall uh, occlusion. Uh, so you may need to raise up a bit more the uh, the overlap if you want to reduce the possibility of, occlu of occlusion uh, in your uh, photogrammetric project. Uh, and to conclude this section is, is one source of data is better than the other one? At this point, I don't think that one source is better than the other one. It really depends on the application that you want to you wanna have. But I really think that both sources are complementary one to each other. So uh, if you're able to really uh, mix them together perfectly, uh, like we do with uh, Correlator 3D, uh, you can get the best out of uh, your geospatial data and get really uh, high, high quality uh, geospatial analysis. So now that I've talked a bit about the uh, a bit more knowledge part, let's, ju let's jump into the more practical part and how you can manage to register perfectly your LiDAR and your imagery together with Correlator 3D version 8.6. So, uh, as I said, LiDAR comes in a, in a point cloud format, typically a LAS file. Uh, and then uh, from this point cloud, if we want to perfectly register your images and use them for our photogrammetric processing, we need to derive, um, we need to derive the, uh, the surface model and probably an intensity images from your LiDAR point cloud. So the first step, uh, once your photogrammetric project is created, is to bring in your LiDAR point cloud to generate intensity image and also uh, LiDAR surface DSM. So how does the, the point cloud conversion uh, is handled in Correlator 3D? So now let's jump uh, through our software and let me show you how this can be done. So here uh, you have the graphical user interface of Correlator 3D. Correlator 3D basically has a modular architecture, uh, which is basically breaking down in, into three big modules. We have the AT module where we're going to refine uh, all the position of the images. Then we have the uh, DEM uh, extraction uh, module, typically for photogrammetry. So if you want to extract surface model uh, from your images, uh, or even terrain model. And then we have the uh, ortho rectification and um, mosaic creation. So here the goal when using LiDAR is uh, you can sometimes skip uh, the uh, DEM extraction module since uh, the LiDAR is going to provide you uh, the surface information and maybe the terrain information. So it's kind of a, a shortcut uh, throughout your photogrammetric project. If at the end you want to have uh, Ortho uh, or ortho mosaics generated from lidar uh, DEMs or even point cloud uh, point cloud uh, colorized lidar. Um, so if first of all, if you want to import your uh, lidar in Correlator 3D, so uh, you can go into File and then here into Import lidar last file. So this will basically ask you what type of last file, uh, what where is your last file is located. So you can go uh, with the three little dots and select the, the location of your last file. Here you can uh, check in the uh, extract the DEM. So it will compute uh, the surface model from the LiDAR point cloud. And you can also extract an intensity map if the intensity feature is uh, available in your, um, in your LiDAR data, depending on the sensor you're using. So now, and once this is done, well, the software will compute uh, here, as we can see on the screen, on the screen, we're going to have a, a LiDAR surface model. And also at this point, we're going to have um, a reference ortho. So here is uh, the reference ortho is the intensity map. So for uh, so I will be able to use this intensity as a planimetric uh, as a planimetric uh, GCPs and use the 3D point cloud as the vertical uh, GCPs for the aerial triangulation. So once your LiDAR uh, is already imported into Correlator 3D, um, you can use the LiDAR intensity for the image registration. So uh, we offer two different types of workflow uh, and I'll present both of them. 
Uh, and also, I have a preference for, for one, uh, one of them, so I'll, I'll let you know uh, by the end of this section. Uh, so, the first option that is available is basically the use of the intensity and the, and the uh, LiDAR DM to directly generate tie points between your input images and the intensity features. Uh, so when you're going to extract the tie points uh, of your images, the software will also uh, try to find common features uh, with the intensity images and anchor uh, the project uh, by common tie points between both data sets. Uh, so that's the first, the, the, first, uh, the first option. The other option, which is a bit more uh, conventional, uh, it's um, where uh, you replace your traditional ground control points uh, from from survey data uh, with photogrammetric project with ground control points from your lidar data sets. Uh, we have a tool that uh, allows the users to quickly extract uh, 3D GCPs from lidar data, uh, and they can use them uh, as ground control points during the aerial triangulation. And this uh, will make sure that uh, both sources. Uh, will be perfectly rectified because uh, typically the goal here is to have a, a good AT where your image and your lidar are perfectly registered. Because at the end of this, uh, at the end of this step, well, uh, it's there that you you'll set the overall accuracy of your project. So really, the key point of having a good lidar and good imagery together is at the aerial triangulation. Uh, so. The first, um, the first uh, option that I've, I've provided basically is you can, first of all, import your LiDAR data. So you can go into file, uh, import, and then create the, the LiDAR DEM and, um, and the uh, uh, intensity images. And basically this uh, will provide you um, will provide you uh, some blue dots, which are basically the um, the the image, uh, the reference image itself. And when the software will run uh, the will run the tie point extraction, it can it can depending on on the, the the feature types, it can retrieve some links between the block of images that we have here, uh, with all those uh, with all those um, intensity images. Uh, then if you want, once you're gonna once you're gonna load, uh, you're gonna run the bundle adjustment. Well, we're gonna refine the position of the camera. Uh, you will be able uh, here to use the option reference ortho with current dem. So it's gonna use the the, the common features uh, that we have extracted between the intensity and the lidar uh, and the input images, and it's gonna use them. And in your quality report, you will see reference point uh, as ground sources. So that's the first option. The other option, uh, which is something I I typically uh, prefer because uh, it's it's not more robust, but uh, it's uh, we usually give more weight to ground control points. So uh, we have a tool in the um, in the aerial triangulation module uh, since the version the version eight point five, where you can add. Here, uh, you can create a GCP directly from uh, the visual interface. So now I have imported my LiDAR, uh, my LiDAR and uh, my intensity images, and I can use this tool to, uh, to, to just click somewhere into my intensity images. So let's say I could click on just quickly here, and then the software will load uh, the overall 3D coordinates. So it's gonna load the planimetric and the vertical coordinates. And all I would have to do is basically just tag where uh, this belongs in my imagery. So it's like if you were tagging normal GCP. Uh, this uh, is, is personally, I think, uh, a, a better option. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a more... Uh, it's it's a better option since more more weights are usually applied uh, to to ground control points, um, so you can tag to all your images and then uh, it's gonna create you uh, here in the GCP section. You will see the user GCP, um, the user GCP. In the case where uh, you you would you would like only uh, planimetric accuracy, you can also edit uh, the overall accuracy of. Uh, of your uh, the overall type of your ground control point, so you can set uh, here uh, 
the type to maybe checkpoints or you can you can directly uh, mark some ground control points or only draw uh, also uh, checkpoints if you want to validate the overall accuracy of your uh, of your project um, so once this is done and you have uh, you have enough ground control points over all your over all your 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 project well uh, what you can do is you can run the bundle adjustment and use the ground control points option and uh, once uh, this will be done uh, it will generate you uh, a quality report uh, that uh, will be I'll be showing you in a moment so you will have um, a quality report like this that will give you more information uh, here about the overall uh, project summary so you're going to have uh, here the uh, the overall uh, project summary the quality of the relative assessment of your project and then here you're going to have the overall uh, ground control residual uh, and then you're going to have other information about uh, about the center calibration that you've used, the EOs adjustments, uh, and the typical uh, the typical photogrammetry uh, quality report that we usually provide uh, once the AT is done. So this is basically a proof of concept of how well your project is accurate, uh, which uh, comes to my last question of how well uh, this AT can be accurate. So the 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 basically the accuracy that you can you can reach uh, with this type of uh, of workflow is basically the overall accuracy of your data. So, if you uh, if your lidar data is well controlled and and and, and well uh, adjusted, well, you, you you can probably uh, be able to 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 have a, a really good accuracy uh, for your uh, for your photogrammetric project. Uh, also. Uh, you can uh, you can use the lidar DSM once you have uh, generated your AT. Uh, you have done your AT. Uh, you can skip the the DM uh, the DM extraction part from the photos because you can use directly the uh, lidar uh, DSM or DTM if you can import um, if you can import a lidar um, a lidar uh, DTM. Well, you can also import uh, external DM. So, if by any, if for any reason, uh, the your customer provided you with a, with a, a raster based uh, lidar surface or terrain model, you can directly import a GeoTIFF um, a GeoTIFF uh, raster in Correlator 3D and use it for the uh, orth rectification of your images. Uh, also, if you have uh, if you have uh, surface model or a uh, terrain model well uh, you can use um, you can use either one of them if you want to generate a uh, true ortho or classic ortho uh, basically there's there, there's a, a, a difference between uh, some of them so for you that are not uh, familiar with uh, basically the sur the a true ortho which is based on the surface model is a uh, is an ortho photos that that uh, that is uh, or to rectify it from the surface model. So every pixel of the imagery uh, is uh, aligned with the surface model. So uh, if when you're going to look at your um, at your uh, ortho photos or your ortho mosaic, every pixel will will look like if you were looking from above. So every pixel will be uh, aligned with the surface model. The difference with the classic ortho is instead of using the surface model, we're going to use the terrain model. So if you look at uh, elements that are not uh, terrain related, so buildings, buildings, probably buildings or trees, uh, you might still see a leaning effect uh, on such um, object because we only gonna correct for the terrain deformation uh, visually sometimes the classic ortho are much more um, are much more um, nicer to nicer to look even if they still have a, a, a bit of parallax for non terrain elements uh, the true ortho uh, can be uh, highly accurate but sometimes depending on your on your sensor uh, on your sensor configuration or on your uh, flying condition it can give some fuzzy artifacts on this on the roof of building it's not uh, it's not uh, 
software uh, related is probably due, due to the, the, the deformation or the correction of the leaning effect. Um, so if you want to have a good true auto, which is really quite quite hard to, to achieve, uh, sometimes fly as, as higher as possible uh, because when you're flying higher, well, you reduce uh, the, the leaning effect of an object uh specifically if you're if you're flying with uh, with a, a uav uh, with a, a lower a lower end camera also so uh, if you want to import uh, basically an external dm in correlator 3d without importing a lidar last file you can go into your project tree here and then uh, in the uh, the dm section you can Im you can import uh, you can add a DM to your uh, to your project. So you can uh, here click the little plus button and add a, a DM file without any uh, without any um, any problem. Uh, then, uh, depending on the uh, on the type of ortho rectification you want to perform, if it's a classic ortho or a true ortho, uh, basically you can. You can select uh, here in this case, I only have a surface model because I want to generate a true ortho. So I can, uh, I can select the surface model and during the uh, ortho rectification, I will select the DSM base option. And then this will, uh, will generate uh, true ortho photos. So for each individual images, the software will generate uh, a true ortho photo. Uh, also, there's other uh, just other settings that you can use during the auto rectification, such as the overlap. So if you want to maybe crop your images uh, because there you have a really high overlap, well, you can you can use uh, also our new function, uh, which allows the user to crop uh, from from each side depending on uh, on the, on their flight configuration. Uh, and also, uh, you can add the the, the uh, a JPEG compression into the auto. So if you're flying a uh, really a large amount of data, uh, typically for UAV data. The ortho uh, used to be um, an area where a lot of space was taken. So if you want to reduce this uh, disk space, you can also add a, a JPEG compression uh, during the ortho rectification process. Uh, as an example, this uh, will give you uh, individual ortho uh, like this. So you will see uh, here in this case, uh, for each input images, we will generate uh, as an a, 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 a ortho rectified images um, that uh, will be used for the mosaic creation. So uh, once the orthos are generated, you can go into uh, the mosaic creation module, and then uh, depending on your needs, you can also uh, use the, the, the DAM uh, for scene line avoidance. So you can check this little box and the software will try to uh, avoid uh, every areas where there's still parallax left uh, for, for the scene line crossing. So for, for uh, high megapixel UAV cameras and medium or large frame uh, cameras, this option can really be, uh, can, can really uh, be a time, uh, can save up a lot of time uh, during the uh, mosaic uh, editing module. Uh, and then once this is done, basically the software will generate you uh, uh, a mosaic that can be used to uh, colorize the point cloud. So at this uh, at this section, uh, basically once uh, you've done your ortho and your mosaic, you've done probably your mosaic editing if if uh, if you had to do it. You can colorize your lidar point cloud based on your uh, on your images. So uh, all you have to do is is pretty much simple. You need to import um, here uh, a, a lidar point cloud into uh, the the point cloud section, and then in the process you will be able to use uh, the point cloud colorization, and it will take the input uh, the input. Um, LiDAR point cloud and colorize uh, with the uh, images. So it will give you a second point cloud that you can save it as uh, another um, another uh, LES point cloud. And this will, 
will be able to use it for for geospatial analysis for only for visualization so uh, you'll be able to really get uh, the the high accuracy of lidar data intent, uh, and also uh, adding the rgb information so you're really going to have a, a nice a dense 3d point with all the information within one data source uh, also there's other um, other other lidar or other tools that can be used with a lidar data set so um uh the first one that comes in mind is probably the the the, the contour generation so if you have uh, maybe a, a lidar dtm and you want to generate uh, contours uh well you can import uh, either directly your point cloud or your external lidar dm and uh, use our uh, generate contour uh, tools to derive uh, the contours you can choose depending on the uh, resolution that you want or the uh, or the interval that you want uh, depending on the details that you need on your uh, on your lidar uh, on your uh, contour lines you can set your own interval uh, so in this case you can go into process um, and then it will be into uh, dm contour extraction so depending on the uh, surface model or terrain model that you will have uh, selected here in your project tree you can go into the dm contour extraction uh, and then you can set the overall uh, interval uh, interval of uh, of the, your, your contour lines uh, also you can add uh, you can add an elevation attribute so the contour is basically a vector a vector file and you can add uh, in the 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 attribute table of your vector file you will be able to add um, uh, an attribute that will contain the elevation extracted from uh, extract from your uh, lidar dsm or dtm uh, usually typically the, the the contour lines are extracted from uh, the terrain model since they really represent the topography um, but uh, if for any reason you want to do it on the DSM uh, instead of the DTM, everything is possible. Uh, so both of them are uh, can be done. Uh, finally, probably another tool that I would like to uh, I would I would like to uh, to show you is uh, the change de detection tool. So um, having access to here in this case two different types of uh, 3D data set because you can extract uh, you can extract uh, lidar uh, 3D information from your lidar point cloud which can also extract 3D information from your uh, photogrammetric point cloud um, so this uh, those both data source can be uh, compared uh, if you if you want um, if you want uh, if you want to compare both both sources, let's say if your your lidar was flown maybe uh, one year one year uh, before, and you want to see the the height changes, um, but uh, it can uh, it can be useful with our change detection tools to um, to uh, can be useful to perform a change detection or just to compare those elevations. So you can use uh, maybe two DSM or uh, one DSM and one DTM. So if you have access to LiDAR DTM and LiDAR DSM, uh, you can you can derive maybe the canopy heights or every heights of the buildings, uh, every heights of the building. So what, what you can go here basically is uh, you can go into process uh, and then the, in the change detection module, you can use uh, different uh, options. So the reference them and uh, the comparison them. Uh, in this case, if I would like maybe uh, from a, a forestry application, if I would like to know the the, uh, the canopy heights or the heights of my tree, uh, well, I can use the DTM as the reference them and then the DSM as the comparison them. And at the end, I'm gonna have a raster that's gonna show me basically the heights of um, of those uh, of those features. Uh, the interpretation gonna depend on the on the accuracy of your of your terrain model, but uh, it's it's a it's a it's a good feature if you want to quickly see uh, if you would quickly see um, just the heights. Also, if you if you maybe are doing volumetric calculation and you want to see maybe the difference between time uh, date one and date two, but you can compare both uh, two two different 
um, surface model and then uh, use those uh, surface model as, a, uh, as just as, as a comparison. You can also display those changes directly on your mosaic if you want to see areas, uh, visually area that are more um, that are more uh, extracted. So, um, and you can also set the uh, the overall uh, or the, the, the de detection rate that you want to have. So, if you re really want to detect, uh, if you really want to detect um, smaller uh, features, well, it can be uh, it can be uh, possible. Um, so, this probably jumps uh, to the end of my presentation. Uh, just to remind you, here at SimActive, uh, we offer different types of licenses. So, we have uh, flexible pricing options, so the monthly, the yearly, or the permanent subscription uh, for the UAV. Uh, so, for UAV, medium format camera, satellite, or also full frame camera, uh, we offer a node lock or floating license. This is, um, this is possible. Uh, if you want to get started with Correlator 3D, you can always download uh, a, uh, a free trial on our website, uh, www.adsimactive.com. We offer also free processing for marketing purposes. So if you really want to see what you can get from your data, uh, you can send us a small data set and we can process it to you uh, as kind of a demonstration with your, uh, with your own data. Uh, so you can get a, you can get in touch with our sales teams at uh, at our email sales at simactive.com. Thank you for attending to this uh, online training session. So my name is uh, Simon Grandin, and I was a photogrammetric workflow specialist here at Simactive, and I hope you had a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye bye.